I want to use this video just to show the outcome of my first pass on the ground projection. Uh, originally set out to, uh, to use the same uh, nested uh, hierarchical projection system as I'd used on the, on the buildings, uh, using the same projection cameras with the same camera spacings of round, uh, well, vary, varying, but, uh, but round about between 30 and 50 frames depending on the position and the speed of the shot camera. Okay. So this is the projection that's on at the first frame. Um, and this is the problem that I had. You can see that really within just a few frames, the smearing which is depicted here by the uh, by the squares elongating uh, is getting really to a sort of an excessive and this is a point where the camera is actually moving slow slowly because it's starting to gather speed at this particular point due to the interpolation on the animation of the camera so we can see here that just within these frames we can see that we, we're already at a point where the smearing is excessive if I just drop on the second uh, projection here of the of the hierarchy which was uh, which is projecting from the from frame 60 of the moving shot camera we can see that oh, by the time that this actually comes into play these pixels have stretched beyond any sort of recognition as these go on again you can see that at frame 60 they're okay but you can see how quickly they degrade in, in, through through the smearing and this basically goes on through the whole process so if I just uh, if I just drop the rest of the projections on, you can see that the uh, that they're nesting in nicely, um, but the smearing is the big problem, and this is obviously because of the um, the perspective of the cameras being so low to the ground, um, and there's always a temptation to try and keep to the uh, to to the path of the moving moving shot camera, uh, because obviously it makes the hierarchical projection so much easier to implement um, and of course the lower we are to the shot the um, the more we're likely to see the um, the texture in the uh, in the in the image due to the sort of the undulations um, the undulations the recesses in the in the in the uh, in the the curbs and the and, and the flags etc. Uh, so uh, obviously, if we were coming down on a much steeper angle, then we'd be much looking much more orth orth orthographically at that, and we wouldn't get the same effect. But you can see that clearly this isn't working uh, uh, using this particular setup. So I'll just take all of these off and just drop them onto this uh, onto this null object for now, so that we're back to our original, uh, just with the first projection. And we can see how quickly it stretches to a point where it would be unacceptable in terms of the distortion of the actual image. Okay, we can probably get away with a little bit, maybe sort of this kind of thing, but certainly no more. Now, obviously, the next thing that we could do is we could increase, or should I say reduce, the space between the projection cameras. So at the moment, this one, for example, which I, which I dropped on, is projecting from frame 60. If I just uh, use my projection camera from frame 30, and just put that on instead we're now this actually comes in now much sooner so you can see how our our projection on the first frame it's it's still smearing we've got areas that are visible here uh, but we can see that by the time this comes in it hasn't extended it hasn't extended to the beyond where beyond the point where the pixels would have degraded to the point of, uh, of being unrecognizable or having unacceptable levels of distortion okay so that would resolve that issue okay uh, but of course that's probably the slowest part of the camera move at this point the camera is moving at its full speed and we can see how quickly they degrade so the premise here is that we have more projections with a separate a representation of the ground from each of these projections so if I just bring my next one on but rather than this being from frame 90 I'll use for I'll use the projection camera from frame 60 which we used previously so that comes on a little bit sooner so again the second projection which is this one here we're now sort of trying to mitigate its extension you can see that it's already extending beyond an acceptable level uh, just in, on these outer edges, for for example, it's already extended. Even with by reducing that space between the between the uh, the cameras to just 30 frames. So really, what this means is I'm only really going to get away with 15, maybe 15, 20 frame gaps between the projections at this point here. I'll just use one more just to kind of illustrate this. So I've, I've projected from frame 0, 30, and 60 so far. I'll just bring in one more. 
Oops. And this time I'll project this one from, let's go again. Uh, I've got a projection camera from frame 75 or 90. That's a 30 frame grab. We already know that that's a little bit too much. This is just a 15 frame uh, space. So let's go with this. I have to set, select my texture and then drop the relevant projection into the camera. So that's just a 15 frame gap between the two. And, and we can already see that at these outer peripheries, the stretching is just, is just even, even with that just a small 15 frame gap, it's excessive. Okay, so what this is telling me, um, and just a cursory calculation would suggest that in order to implement this approach with the, just this, with this incredibly short spacing between the cameras, I'm probably going to need between 25 and 30 cameras over the, over the, the 200 frame duration of the shot just to, uh, just to basically prevent this smearing issue. So it's not really a viable solution.